What's the difference between positive and normative in economics? And this is a concept that's introduced early in economics textbooks because I think in a lot of ways this gets at the heart of the economist's identity. So economists like to think of ourselves as going after positive stuff rather than normative stuff. So first of all, what are these? What, what do these mean? Positive is intended to be just the facts. You're just describing the world as it is. Normative, on the other hand, involves value judgments and statements about what should be. So let's go through a few examples relating to these policy changes that economists might consider. So if we're thinking about the minimum wage, a positive statement might be when this state increased the minimum wage, the number of workers hired in the low-skilled worker category went down. If that happened, that would be a positive statement. Now, the economist who presented that particular fact might say we should not increase the minimum wage, and they might point to this fact as one of the reasons they have this belief. An economist on the other side of the issue might say, actually, if you slice and dice the data differently, um, when you increased the minimum wage, there was no decrease in employment among this particular group, but a reduction of poverty rate. So those things are just facts. It's just looking at what happened when this policy was introduced. That's positive facts. And the second economist would have the normative statement, we should increase minimum wage. So if you're ever trying to figure out, is this positive or is this normative? One of the best questions to help you with that is, is the word should in there? And if so, it's definitely normative. And if the word should is not in there, you might say, could I rephrase this using the word should? And if that's true, then it's a value judgment. It's about what should be done. It's normative. With a gas tax policy, the normative statement might be something like, uh, we should increase uh, gas taxes in order to reduce uh, driving, which will reduce carbon emissions. And then the positive statements might be used to back up any given position. And a positive statement about the gas tax situation might be people drive less when prices for gas are higher. And you could look at all different types of data that might back up that positive statement. With student loan subsidies, you might have an argument about the positive fact of whether people will get more education when the loan, uh, loan subsidies go up. Like two different economists with different opinions about whether these subsidies could happen can argue about the facts instead of the, the statement. So they'll get into a deep, deep argument about when, uh, when subsidies go up, do we see people getting more education? Or are there other factors driving any correlation we see that might suggest this? So economists spend a lot of time getting into arguments about the facts and the causal relationship that's sort of behind those facts. And economists try to avoid normative statements. Now here's one of the potential problems we have, which is what about predictions? Now, some of the nuances we have here when it comes to understanding these two concepts come when you look at the idea that economists generate a lot of predictions about the world. So are predictions positive or normative? And of course, economists are going to argue that they're positive, and I think they are, but I do think this is something we need to think carefully about. And the other thing here is the idea of social welfare. If economists says a certain policy, like a tax policy on gas, will increase social welfare, is that positive or normative? Because essentially that's saying, I think we should increase that tax that will make the population better off. But are there value judgments that are built into that? So let's, let's think a little bit about both of these. So predictions are going to use facts about the world that are purely positive, but they are going to place those facts into a model about the economist's view of how the world works. And that's really the, the wonderful thing about economics, is economics forces economists to spell out what assumptions are they making? How, how does causality work in their particular worldview? And they have to spell that out using an economic model. 
So this is one of the best things about economics, in my opinion, is that if you're coming up with um, pol policy analysis, a lot of times people will focus on data and what the data says, but there will be a whole bunch of assumptions behind the way they translate any given correlation or piece of data into the way the world works, and, and that gets messy and can translate into policy opinions or policy normative statements that are really not well-grounded, where they have not carefully evaluated their assumptions. The fact that economists trust analyses more when, when analyses come with a theoretical model laying out their perception of causality means we are looking a lot more closely at our assumptions, making sure that our values aren't unintentionally built into our assumptions. So that's one of the wonderful things about economics. Now, I think one of the real problems here comes when we think about social welfare. So social welfare is essentially the collective utility of everybody. And there's different ways you can aggregate that. Either you can just add up everybody's utility, or you can think of this as the utility of the group in the population that's worst off, depending on whether you're utilitarian or Rawlsian. But one of the problems here is you have to come up with your opinion about other people's utility. And when you do that, people tend to project their own personal values onto other people, rather than deeply understanding those other people's values. So, so when economists say that one policy will lead to higher social welfare than another policy, the assumptions about people's utility, and which includes people's values and their experiences, that's built into that um, statement that higher social welfare will result from X policy than Y. And so is that purely positive? Can you say that's purely positive if you've done a social welfare analysis? But I think one of the reasons that economists are so powerful and are hired so often in important positions is because people doing that hiring are always afraid that whoever they hire from academia is going to have a bunch of really strong normative beliefs that they're imposing on their analysis. Whereas with economists, because we take so much pride in our positive analysis and in staying out of the normative and keeping everything in the realm of facts and causal models and all that, people trust us, especially since they can actually look at our, um, our assumptions at the bottom of our models and critique the assumptions whenever they want.